Hey, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to do some work on the Continental. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do three things. Uh, the first thing is I'm changing the tires on the bike. And so I've never changed motorcycle tires before. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, the second thing I'm gonna do is since I am taking the tires off the bike, I'm gonna do a tubeless conversion on the spoked rims. So it's gonna require sealing all the spokes on the rim, put on tires without tubes. And finally, the third thing I wanna do is since I am changing the tires, I've gone and bought a wider tire for the back. Now, the bike currently runs 130s, but word in the street is you can go up to a 150, but that does look a lot wider. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see if it fits. And also the thing that I'm really interested to seeing with running a wider tire on the back is does it provide any extra stability Especially this bike at high speeds doesn't always feel as stable as I would like. So be interested to see how that goes. Uh, but obviously the first thing, first thing I'm gonna have to do is take off the front tire, take off the rear tire, then remove the tire from the rim, and then do the tubeless conversion and seal up the rims. I'm gonna lift the back first. And I'll also get this under there. Seems pretty stable. Okay, so to take off this front wheel, uh, the first thing we do need are these tools. We do have 5 8 wrench for the right, a 24 millimeter for this side, and a six millimeter Allen for the fork. Let's see, right here you can see, we do have to get in here, loosen this Allen bolt here. Then using this wrench on this side, and this one on this side, Pretty easy. I'm gonna go ahead and raise it up a little bit so that way we get the wheel off the ground. I think that should be good. And we should be able to pull this axle out just like that. Now it's also recommended that when you pull it out, you put a piece of cardboard into your brake caliper, and that's just to keep your caliper from uh, closing in on itself. Take that off. Okay, let me get this wheel out of the way. So that was pretty easy. No problem there. And then here, We'll go ahead and stick that cardboard in there. So there we got the front wheel off. Now we'll just move it around to take off the rear. Okay, now to remove the rear wheel, uh, my understanding is we do need a punch rod like this just to hold right in there. We also do need the 24 millimeter wrench again for this side over here. And then we have two 12 millimeters to loosen the two nuts here so that way we could slide the chain forward. And there is a little mark right back here. And you can see made right there so we know where to tighten the chain back to when we tighten it back up again. But to get started, just need to loosen this back axle there we go we'll loosen this back We 
region. Take out the axle first. There we go. And we can roll it forward a little bit, get this chain off. And just roll the tire on out. Remember, I have this piece here that I believe was on the inside. Yeah, this piece here that went in there. So I have to remember that. And then also, like the front, I put some cardboard in between the brake pads just to keep it from compressing and closing. All right, next, I'm just going to have to take these tires off. I'm going to have to let the air out and break the bead and pull the tires off. So to do this, I bought a kit to remove the tire. I got this kit that has these spoons in it. Uh, it does have some of these little guards separately. I bought these ones here. And then it also does come with a few extra stems and a stem remover, which we'll use to let the air out of the tire and also replace the stem. And then I also did get these big clamps. We'll use these on the tire to break the bead. Yeah, here we go. And the tube. So we got the front off. Let's go on to the back. There we go, finally. Just one lifetime later. So now they're both the rear and the front tire rims. Next step will be to seal all the spokes, make these puppies tubeless. All right, so I got this Outex kit. Uh, this is a kit for the tubeless conversion. Got it off of eBay. This one, one it seems like a lot of people have used. Uh, so let's see what comes in this. So this kit is actually expensive for just these few things. It was like $110. Throw in the tax, shipping, it was like $140. Bucks. So it is ridiculously expensive. I've seen some people do a conversion with a $10 roll of Gorilla Tape. So I did this because I just wanted to make sure I had all the pieces I needed and just make sure I just do it right. Uh, you know, getting a flat on your motorcycle isn't the best thing. So this comes with uh, these two rolls of sticky tape, of thick sticky tape. And this is for the front tire, this one for the rear tire. They label them on there for you just in case you couldn't tell the difference. Um, and this here is the protective film that goes over the sticky tape and you can see the hole where the valve stem sticks through which they do give you the valve stems here that you need uh this tape over here on the side i believe this is to mask off the edges these little sticky things that go over each um each little spoke nub on the inside these here i'll have to see what these are for some white gloves. And in addition to this, I also did buy um, this adhesive sealant. Uh, this doesn't come in with a kit. It's not necessarily needed. It might even be overkill. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna use it yet. I've seen other people on YouTube use this stuff to seal each of the spokes. So 
Maybe I'll use it, maybe not. I'm not sure yet, we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna start with the front tire. Uh, I have this tire balancing thing here. I'm not gonna use it really to balance the tires. I'm gonna use it just to have something to put the tire on or the rim on to do the conversion. Uh, this is the front. So we'll start with this one. And what I'm gonna do first is I do have to take off this rubber strip here that was for the tube. And then I'm gonna clean it, um, give it a light sand, clean it again, and then start with the application of the sticky tape and the adhesive sealant or whatever else I'm gonna do. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take off this rubber strip that was there for the tube to protect the tube from the uh, from the little spoke nuts, spoke screws. All right. And these tips, they don't really stick out too much. Now there are, they do give you these little things so you can stick them over to kind of protect from it, but there is a lot of gap in there. So I'm thinking I will probably use this adhesive sealant to fill in those gaps just a bit. But first what I'm going to do is clean this. I have some of this acetone here, so I'm gonna clean it. And then they recommend sanding it down, giving it a light sand, cleaning it again, making sure it's all nice and dry and ready to apply the tape. All right, I think I've got it pretty clean now. Clean, sanded, cleaned again. So next I'm gonna add this Marine 3M adhesive sealant. So it's a waterproof, flexible sealant that I wanna get right into each one of these nubs here, just to smooth it out and extra, extra seal, uh, just to supplement the tape. All right, I've got them all covered. It's a little messy right now, so I'm just gonna let it dry a little bit, and then I'll try to clean it up, smooth it down a little bit, clean off the edges, but I think it should be good. While the front tire is drying, I'm gonna get started on the back. All right, so they're all dry. I cleaned it up, cut off any little excess sticking out, and I think it's good enough now to start putting on the tape. So the way it works is you have this first layer that you put around, then there's a second layer that you put around, protective layer. Uh, and instructions say you're supposed to start between the first and second hole spoke right after where the air valve goes. And so you're gonna get this centered. Like that. And then as you go along, work out any air bubbles, trying to keep it perfectly centered as I go. All right, so you just make your way around with this double-sided sticky tape, just trying to work out all the bubbles, making sure you get it as centered as possible. I work it with my fingers and I'm also using the back side of a, a wrench to really get it as tight as possible. There we 
we go. All right, and so the next step is where we're supposed to wear these white gloves that they give us. Don't really fit very well. <laughs> and so there's a layer here we have to peel off. And then with this layer, you can see there's a hole for the valve stem. So we just line it up with that and then we wrap it. And then we want to go ahead and stick this protective layer on and just like the other one go around and squeeze out all the bubbles get it as nice and tight on there as possible And that's all the tape you have left. So you can save this. So if you have, if you do have to do any repairs, if you find any leaks, you have at least a little bit you can work with. But I'm just gonna stick that right over the seam. Now I'm just going to tighten down the valve stem. And when you tighten, the valve stem, you want to get it tight enough where you're putting enough pressure that you're not going to get a leak, but you don't want it too tight where you damage the rubber gasket on the inside. So next I'm going to just mount the tire, make sure it's all good. Okay, so this is the rear wheel. So it goes on this way, that way would be forward. And then on the tire, it's saying this way is forward. And there's a red dot. You match up the red dot with where your valve stem is right there. All right, so I got the tire on. I'm gonna put some air in there and see if we can get this thing, get this tire to bead. All right, and I'm not sure if you could hear it because the compressor was going when the beads popped, when the tire beaded, you heard it pop, pop. 34.4, I'm gonna fill it up to about 40. I think it's 42 cold. But I'll fill this up and then do the front tire. All right, so I've got the tire all set. I did the tubeless conversion, put on the new tire. Now I have to figure out how to get this thing back on. All right, now for this back tire. Let's see if we can get this on, and I'm curious to see how this fits due to it being a 150 instead of a 130. And then I'm gonna put in the wheel balancer. Ah. I have to check the torque specs on that. And it should be good. All right, so I took the weights off the rim and I'm gonna balance the wheel with this uh, tire sealant and wheel balancer. So this seals the tire, helps protect from punctures and also balances the wheel. And it does come with everything you need. It has a little thing here where you can take out the core and release the air from the tire. Blub, 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 All right, so it's been about two weeks since I did the tubeless conversion and tire change on the Continental. 
and so far it's been great. I've taken it out on a couple rides, hit some twisties, got some speed, and so far there's been no issue. Uh, the tires have been holding their pressure, and I've noticed improved performance on handling. Just high speeds, it just feels more stable. On the corners, it feels stable. Whereas before, it was feeling a little bit just kind of washy when you got up to some high speeds or just a little bit like weren't gripping the road the way you wanted to when you're going around corners. So it's been great. Uh, the only thing I did notice was when I was going over some bumps, initially there was some scraping sounds. So putting on the much wider tire, as I showed before, there is a big difference between the original 130 and the new 150. So that was a big difference. So the scraping was just coming from the chain guard. So the chain guard was a little too close. You got a light you can see here. So all I did was just put a little, cut a little notch in the chain guard and that seemed to fix the issue. But other than that, it's been running great and performing better than expected. So I'm pretty happy with it.